Welcome to the Facebook Live question and answer session here. I'm Dr. Michael Cloda. I'm the medical director here at the ET, UT, excuse me, UT Health Breast Care Center in Tyler. And we're going to talk about breast cancer screening and diagnosis and any other question you may have regarding breast cancer. So we'll get started. So what is breast cancer? Well, breast cancer is like any other cancer, uncontrolled cell growth in the body. And in the breast, most of these cancers arise in the part of the breast called the ducts, so the tubes in the breast that normally would provide a path for milk production to reach the baby. The uh, cells that line the tubes go haywire, if you will, and start growing in an uncontrolled fashion and develop a small tumor. And that essentially is breast cancer. There are several different kinds of breast cancer, but by and large, ductal carcinoma is the most common type of breast cancer. Who can get breast cancer? Well, believe it or not, men as well as women can develop breast cancer. The vast majority of breast cancers are found in women. Breast cancer in men makes up only 1% of all breast cancer. But uh, women uh, are, the, by and large, the most common uh, person to develop breast cancer. It's typically a disease found in the 50s and into the 60s is the peak age where we see breast cancer, and that's just a, based on the fact that the population of women is greatest in those uh, decades. But any woman, say, age as young as in the early 20s all the way up to the 90s, into 100 can develop breast cancer. So what are the symptoms of breast cancer? Well, early breast cancer has no symptoms, and that is why we have to screen every woman of the appropriate age for breast cancer. We have recommended annual screening begin at age 40, and it should be undertaken at a 12-month interval, and that's with a mammogram. Now, some women qualify for additional or supplemental screening. And that type of screening is reserved for those women that have extremely dense breast tissue on their mammogram or those women that are noted to be at high risk. And that's a specific calculation based on that woman's individual characteristics and factors in her life that we're able to state to her, hey, you're at high risk, you would benefit from the following. And that may be ultrasound screening or MRI screening in addition to the mammogram. So is breast cancer preventable? Well, it's um, not really preventable as much as one can, say, reduce some factors in their life through lifestyle choices to reduce their risk to develop breast cancer. So if we're gonna look at factors that a woman can control versus factors that a woman cannot control, well, let's start with factors she can't control cannot control your hereditary or your genetic makeup you receive from your mother and father. You can't control how early or how late you started your period. And you can't control what environmental factors you may have been exposed to over your lifetime. Things you can control as a woman to reduce your risk are you can maintain your normal body weight. And that's most important after you've reached, say, the early 20s and then moving forward into the 30s and 40s. Try not to, to gain too much body weight. We can talk about why that's important later. You want to, if you're considering having children, actually early childbearing is protective as far as developing breast cancer. The later one puts off having that first child, the risk to develop breast cancer increases. And hormonal usage, hormonal exposure, to estrogen over the lifetime is one of the factors that's important in looking at one's risk to develop breast cancer. The, the greater the exposure to estrogen, the higher the risk. And two important factors that a woman can control, in addition to maintaining a normal body weight, is to eliminate or very much reduce their intake of alcohol. So no more than one drink of alcohol per day is recommended and abstaining from alcohol would be best. 
So you kind of touched on this a little bit, but how can I decrease my chances of getting breast cancer? Well, the most women that we talk to regarding this say are in their 30s or 40s and they, they've already started their period, they've had their first child, so a lot of these factors are not anything that they can change. And one of the things that's real important in today's social environment, again, is the alcohol consumption. Um, uh, drinking in women has been increasing steadily over the last 20 to 30 years, and there are many people that believe that has a direct correlation with the increased incidence of breast cancer that we're seeing. Also, um, in society, I think childbearing has been delayed progressively since uh, the 19, say, 30s to 40s to, uh, to today, over that last 70 years, the age that a woman has her first child, if she even has children, has progressively become later and later, and that is going to elevate the risk. And, and why is that? Well, we know that with that first child, that pregnancy to term, and you initiate the milk production and breastfeeding, it results in a maturation, a terminal maturation, if you will, of the cells that line the breast ducts. And that is believed to be protective. The earlier that happens, the better. What screenings are available and when should I get them? The mainstay of screening to detect breast cancer is the mammogram. And that's essentially an x-ray of the breast. A mammogram consists of two images of each breast. It's a standard mammogram. And that is then interpreted by a board-certified diagnostic radiologist to look for signs of early breast cancer in an otherwise asymptomatic woman. And these signs that we're looking for are small masses or nodules, if you will, a distortion in the breast where the tissue looks like it's been pinched, and calcification deposits. So those are the main three main things we're looking for. Now, once the mammogram is obtained, it's interpreted and the report is issued, and by law, we're required to mail a letter to the individual that had the mammogram as to whether or not the mammogram showed normal findings, it's negative, or whether or not there was a problem and additional imaging is indicated. That would be called a recall from screening mammography. So if a woman's recalled, she's asked to return to the breast care center and additional mammographic imaging is done, Oftentimes an ultrasound is done, and at a breast care center such as this, the woman, the patient, is informed that day as to what's going on and what needs to be done, if anything, further at that time. Where can I get a mammogram? Well, mammography is available at many of the breast care centers across the country. Many hospitals have imaging available. And of course, here locally, I would encourage you to avail yourselves of the UT Health facilities. We have the uh, Breast Care Center here in Tyler in the Olympic Building. We have uh, the Mobile Mammography Unit, which travels throughout East Texas on a regular schedule. And that's available with the state-of-the-art equipment and the same technologists that are seeing patients here in the Breast Care Center staff the mobile unit. And there's UT Health North off 271 and we also have satellite clinics throughout East Texas, say Pittsburgh, Quitman, uh, Cedar Creek Lake, where mammography is available as well. Okay, those are all the questions we have. I will say um, right now, there's been a push lately, and not by the radiologists or by the breast imaging specialists, to tell women in their 50s that they can obtain a mammogram, say, every other year. And I think that's very bad advice. And I would encourage the women that have received that advice to ignore that. If you're over the age of 40, you should receive a mammogram every 12 months. And by doing that, you have that snapshot of the breast tissue every 12 months. You give an individual such as myself the greatest chance to pick up and find that subtle early change in the breast tissue that may indicate the presence of early cancer. And what's the whole point of screening? Well, the whole point of screening is to catch something that's so early that is cancer that we're able to treat it in a very limited, minimally destructive fashion with a substantially greater chance of cure. And there's um, 
I tell you, I've, every month we see women that say had received mammography three, four, five years straight, they're doing a great job, and all of a sudden they disappear for two, three years, and then they pop up again, and now they've got a lump they're feeling. And now we've got a breast cancer the size of a golf ball, when if she just kept that screening schedule going, I'm almost certain that we would have caught that when it was the size of a pea or smaller and, and been able to, to treat that successfully. One of the biggest factors involved with breast cancer treatment is whether or not the tumor has spread outside of the breast. And breast cancer most commonly spreads to lymph nodes or glands in the armpit or the axilla. So if we can catch that tumor before it's had the chance to spread to those lymph nodes, the chance of cure is very, very high. And that's all dependent on catching it as early as possible, which means get your mammogram every 12 months. It will save your life. Good deal. And those are all the questions we have. So I think all we right. can close out. All right. Thank you everyone for joining. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you.